I'm going to take the derivative of this equation. Everything. Probably, um, n well, you might get a point for that. You get two, it's only two points for this part of the problem. Right. Because you know that you're going to do implicit differentiation. That's okay. Now, when you take the derivative of this and you say it's 6y squared, that's the derivative of 2y cubed with respect to y. Then you have to chain it. You have to take the derivative of the inside function. So it's times, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? dy over dx. So that's where the dy dx has come from. Now what about the next thing? That's a product. So I'm going to pull the 6 out and take the derivative of x squared times y. So it's x squared times the derivative of the second function. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? dy dx. Because I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to x. I can't simplify it. But watch when I do the next one. It's plus y times the derivative of x squared, which is what? 2x times the derivative of the inside function, but with respect to x. But we know what that is. That's 1. But I'm writing it so you see that it's always there. You always do that, really. So what's the next one? It's minus. Ignore the 12. And then take the deriv derivative of x squared. It's what? 2x times the derivative of the inside function. dx over dx. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. I just ignore the 12. Because remember, if I wanted to use the product rule on that, I could. Then it would be this x squared times the derivative of 12, but the derivative of 12 is 0. It's easier. <laughs> You'll still get the same answer. Okay, plus, then we have 6, we just ignore that, times the derivative of this function. That's where the dy dx is coming from. It's the derivative of this function with respect to x. And what's the derivative of any constant? Zero. Zero. What if I had y squared and I want the derivative with respect to t? Then I would find the derivative of y squared with respect to y, really, but it's 2y, times, and this is a function of time, perhaps, so it's times dy dt. That's the chain rule. It's really always times the derivative of the inside function. I just don't write it when I do this. Well, I do, because I want you to see it. There's a d dx with every single term, but some become 1, and this one becomes 1. You guys try your homework? No. <laughs> you always have homework. There's I know it's day one out of 3.8, but you have three days to do the two days. Okay, three things certain in life. Death, taxes, and math homework. You even, you even have taxes when you die. So, death, taxes, and math homework. Three givens in life. <laughs> okay. Now, what? Let's, let's, you guys, let's simplify this, okay? You ready? This is the easy part, actually. <laughs> okay, it's 6y squared. Now, the last class wanted me to write dy dx as y prime. Do you prefer that? You can. I like, well, I like dy dx. Okay, but wait a minute, because this tells me with respect to what variable. Okay, I'm going to distribute this. So it's 6x squared. Those of you who like dy dx, the, the prime. No, no, I never do that. There's no magic. Pardon? I haven't figured out how to do it with the cast, but yes. Okay, plus what? 
distribute that. So let's see, it's 2x times y, so it's 12xy. That's 1. Because you have to distribute right there. We did this one. This is not distributive property. This is associative. It's all multiplication. No addition there. Distributive property distributes multiplication over addition. There's no addition. Here's the addition right there, the plus. 6y squared dy dx. I took the prime out. Because I, I said I'll change it to prime and half people wanted it and half didn't. So what's the x dx? What? Now do this one. Minus, this is algebra now. 24x the x dx, which is 1. That's when you missed. You had this one. Plus. 6y dx equals 0. Now, unfortunately, on the exam, you can't do this, but I'm going to do it. I want all the dy dx's on one side and everything else on the other. Can't use a highlighter. But while you're learning it, doesn't mean you can't. So I'm going to take out a dy dx. I'm going to factor it out. How did I get what? Ask. Yeah, can you get that? There is the answer. Can you get it? So it's 6y squared. Now, you get one point for knowing how to do this implicitly, even if you do it wrong. As long as it's a good effort, not a weak effort. Right here. This last one. Remember this one? So I'm going to put the 24x on the other side, minus 12xy. And we're almost done. We are going to divide by this. And they give you the answer because I'm going to use the answer later on. So when you, if you make a mistake with this, you use always what they give you. And plus, since they give you the answer, think about it. You have to use that answer, right? It, may, it should make sense. And can you just go to the final answer? Probably. What can I factor out of the denominator? Six. So it's x squared. I like mine alphabetical. Plus y squared plus one. And then if I take six out of that, I'll take six out of the numerator, which is 4x minus 2xy, right? And what happens to the sixes? Do I get what they told me to? Okay, so if you, you you might be able to use that answer to manipulate. You get 15 minutes of problem, so keep that in mind. Okay, 15 minutes. That's why you practice for six weeks before the exam. Yes. You get the point, you'll get one point taken away because you didn't quite get to the correct answer, but you get a point for understanding you're going to do this implicitly rather than trying to solve for y, which can be done. I don't know how to do it, but it can be done. You'll have enough practice. Well, you should have enough practice if you do the homework to see that this is what you do. <laughs> then you'll get one out of two points. Yeah, this one was worth two. Okay, ready for B? Write the equation of each horizontal tangent line. So I like to figure out what I'm going to do here. I want a horizontal tangent line. So, you know, I don't know what this looks like. I don't even know if it's a function. But we'll pretend it does something like this. Who cares? What's true about the slope of the, tan uh, the horizontal tangent line? Well, that's what you have to use. You get the point for saying the slope, which is dy dx, right, equals 0. But that's, that's no algebra there. That's concepts. If I have a horizontal tangent line, 
the slope of this line has to be zero. Well, my slope of my line is right here. That's why they gave it to me. 2xy over, and this is why this is a kind of a hard problem, x squared plus y squared plus 1, that has to equal 0. So when is that 0? When what's true? When the numerator is 0, right? Now that's going to be algebra. But here's where we might get stuck. This is why we do problems. I can't review everything in the six weeks before the exam, so we're doing it right now. I want that to be zero, so you factor out what? Zero prior property. Let's take a 2x out. You could do x. And I'm left with what? 2 minus y. How do I know I did it right? Multiply it back out. Is that right? So what values will make this zero? x is equal to zero or y equals 2. So a lot of you want to throw out the x equals 0 because it's asking for the equation of the horizontal tangent. What should that look like? Horizontal lines look like this. What's the equation of the horizontal lines look like? y equals, no, that's a, not a horizontal line, 1 or a constant. So some of you, Equation of horizontal line is just y equal to a constant. So some of you will say, well, y equals 2. I've got my answer. I'm done. Be careful. You get extraneous answers. The slope is 0 when y is equal to 2. But is y ever equal to 2 in my function? That's the hard part. You have to go back, and we have to check this. Does that work? It's not that bad, so let's check it. Let's do y equal to 2. Just look and see what happens at y equals 2. Because that's the equation of a horizontal line. Okay, so I get 2 times y cubed, so 2 times 2 cubed, plus 6x squared times 2, minus 12x squared, plus 6 times 2 equals 1. So what do I get here? 8 times 2 is 16. What happens to the x squared? They cancel out. So I get 16 plus 12 equals 1. Is that y, is y ever equal to 2? No. I can't, if I put 2 in there, I get 28 equals 1. That's not going to happen. So guess what? We throw that out. So, But there's another opportunity. x equals what? 0. So let's put x equals to 0 in there. Can I find the y coordinate? Now, if that doesn't work, then there is no place where you have a horizontal tangent. There's no guarantee you have that. But let's try x equals to 0 here. So I'm going to get 2y cubed. That's 0. That's 0, right? Plus 6y equals 1. I don't know how to solve that except on my graphing calculator, so that's what we're going to do. But I don't like this due to the intersection because now I have to worry about how tall my window is. I don't care how tall it is. If I subtract the 1 and I look for the zeros, I'm going to use the intermediate values theorem to do the problem. Now, intermediate value theorem says if this function is positive and then it's negative, it had to be what? It had to be zero. So if I, now by the way, is the solution to the one in red here the same as the solution to this one? Get 15 points, 15 minutes. And you can go, oh no, you can't. Because it's not on the website anymore. So you can go back and look and see what the average score was. But if I put this on my graphing calculator and find the number that makes that true, will that number make this one also true? No. Why not? <laughs> so if I take the x value here that makes that true, and I put that same value in there, because these are the same thing, right. oh, they're just different letters. So I'm going to solve this on my graphing calculator. And I could try 0. If I put in x equal to 0, then this value is negative. And if I try x equal to 1, what happens to this fa this sum? If x equals 1, is this positive or negative? That's positive. If x equals 0, this is negative. Therefore, I have to have a 0 between 0 and 1. OK, so I'm going to get my calculator out, give you guys a chance to do that. This is it. Mine's already set to go, because we already did it. 
There it is. Oh, it's in the wrong place. <laughs> there. 2x cubed plus 6x minus 1. My window, I'll just go 0 to 1. Because I know there's a 0 in there because the function's positive. Then it's negative. You may have to be able to use, use or even say the intermediate value theorem on some problem. And I only want to see where it's 0. So it's no big deal. I don't care how tall the window is. So I want to regraph this. So I'm just going to rekey that. And there it is. It went from negative to positive in that window. So I go second, calculate. I want uh, the zero, two. And then I just type in the bounds because I want zero to one because that's how big my window is. And there it is, 0.165. And I'm going to try and pull this down here someplace. Now, how many decimal places do you have to have? Three. Okay, honestly, honestly, your safest bet is to take all of them. Because if, if you round to just two places, we won't give you the point. If you do that six times on the exam, you lose it six, place, six different questions. Once you round incorrectly on one problem, we don't take it off again. Okay, so if you went to two decimal places throughout this whole problem, we take the point away only one time. Even if you made the mistake three times, it doesn't matter. So you can't get double penalized. But if you put it all in, we only look at the first three. You, if you copy that wrong, we don't care. We don't look at it. So your safest bet is to put them all in. Then you don't have to worry. Was it two? Was it three? Was it one? You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now, that was for the x equation. So what will the y value be? Remember what we did here? We solved this one. We got 0.165. Well, that's the same number that works there. So y equals 0.165. These answers, the scoring rubric is online. I think this is the entire problem, by the way. I don't think we cut anything out of this one. So now you're done doing one full AC problem, which is really good. We have to, we have to, it's nine points. Only two for the first part. I don't know what the stats were on this, and I can't get to it anymore. Okay. We're not done. Oh, we got to do one more part. This is, I mean, it's hard. But once you realize you, you, you think through it, horizontal tangent, what does that tell you? The slope is zero. So you get a point for this. You get a point for finding those two. And then you get a point for the point 0.165, y equals 0.165. So even if you can't get that, you got two out of three points. The first part may be three points. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the rubric. My guess is it is three points, because then I think this is three points. So what I'm going to do with this part is I'm going to draw a little sketch. And it says the line through the origin was slope negative 1. Well, guess what that is? That's this. What's the equation of that line? You get a point for that. You get a I know this, because I remember the scoring rubric. You get a point for that. And it says it's just tangent to the curve. I have no idea what the curve looks like. Okay, who cares what it looks like? If these points, okay, you guys in the back, if that curve is tangent, what's true about the x and y coordinate on the line and the x and y coordinate on the curve? They're equal. They're equal. So there are a couple ways to do this. This y coordinate is negative x. I can put that into my original function. <laughs> My original function is this, 2y cubed plus 6x squared y minus 12x squared plus 6y equals 1. These intersect, so y equals negative x, so it's 2 times negative x cubed plus 6x squared times negative x minus 12x squared plus 6 times the negative 1 equals 1. Okay, you guys, don't do that. Now, how would you solve that? Graphing, calculator. One way to do it. Okay, you guys? So you get another point for putting it in there, and then you get another point for solving it. And I don't remember what the answer is. By the way, don't forget you have to have y. X and y are opposites. Okay, you guys in the back? There's another way. What's true about the slope of this line? What's the slope? 
Well, I just because it depends on the day as to which way I think about it. What's the slope of this line? Negative one. What's true about my slope here? The slope of the tangent line and the curve has to be what? Negative one. This one actually works out better. You don't need a ca graphing calculator to do this. X squared plus y squared plus one is equal to negative one, but you also know that y equals minus x. So we can put that right in there and right in there. And that one actually you don't need to graph it. You can actually solve that one algebraically. This one I can't solve algebraic, it's cubic, so I have no idea. Depends on which what you prefer. Depends on what you see on that day. Different days, I see different things. Usually I see it that way, but today I saw it the other way. I'll let you guys finish that off. I'm going to give you back your quizzes. Has everybody taken the quiz? They are in the regular 70, 80, 90 scale.